in brand new remastered technical. Hello and welcome to Two Queers. One pod. I'm Bridie. I'm Imogen. And yeah, this is episode two. Very exciting stuff. How are you today, Imogen? I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. You're doing all right. So good. You know, good. excited to talk about these these firsts for yes. our second episode. My yeah. idea was it that it would be firsts for our first episode, but then but we're so edgy. But then it's... we decided <laughs> to release a previous one first, and now it's firsts for our. Second Seconds. episode. <laughs> Amazing. It's just how we how we roll. Um, so yeah, it's kind of first experiences both in in a lot of different parts of our lives, both queer and I suppose regular, <laughs> if that is such a thing. Um, but yes, yeah, so we've got a few kind of bullet points that I guess we'll just work through one by we one. We have notes. We have notes. We're prepared. Um, so yeah, do you want to start with the first one? And then, and then me, or are we going to do it like one of us does all of them, you do all of yours, or are we going to... just chat about the meat as we get there. Yeah, nice. So, okay then. So the first one is the first time we realised we were gays. And although we kind of touched on this in the first episode, um, I think, like you have said, it's worth rehashing. Rehashing. So do you want, do you want to kick it off? Uh, well, I mean, mine kind of like... <laughs> Nice eyebrow wiggle. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this this will tie in with like a whole bunch of other firsts mm-hmm. and stuff because I it never occurred to me, frankly. Right. Because it everything is is put to you as such a sort of mm, your boyfriend. Oh, is he your little boyfriend? Yeah. Oh, you know, kind of can't bring that boy home to your dad because your dad will have a shotgun, which. <laughs> It's such a weird thing. Yeah. But like, I remember that vividly from being in primary school, like from the age of four upwards about kind of, you know, oh, don't introduce boys to your dad. My dad is not a violent man. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, this was like this go-to thing, particularly for my stepmom and my, my grandmother to say about like, oh, the, you know, the boys and like, yeah. make sure you know That's his family's actually. milk quota. Yeah, I was really like... For in my relationships, I was quite scared for them to my dad for the first time, even though he's literally the most sort of gentle teddy bear. But I think that is probably just because of the whole like, you know, societal thing of yeah, he's got he's got a shovel in the back waiting. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's such a weird thing, and it's to do with like I guess, I guess it must be such a weird moment for like dads. And like it's conversations I've had with my dad about like how he remembers what boys were like. And I'm just like, mm. this is saying a lot about you and your peers <laughs> if you're afraid of all men for me. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I am also afraid of all men for me. <laughs> but it says a lot if you've got that kind of reflective nature about your own adolescence and you go well fuck me I wouldn't have trusted any of us around no for sure you know you when you were a teenager or whatever so yeah um so like most of my childhood and early adolescence the idea of being gay wasn't really like an option Mm. but then we got to a certain age where like we started drinking and making out at parties and I was like yeah I don't want to stop doing this like yeah you you guys are doing this to impress the boys yeah. because apparently they think this is fun. <laughs> but like, I volunteer. Yeah, I volunteer you're like, you're like, tribute. Yeah. I'm like, I'm into this, not because the boys are watching, <laughs> but because I'm quite... I'm quite happy to just sit here I'm and I'm quite let happy to like, like, yeah, make out with people that belt. have ever used a lip balm. Like, yeah. I'm quite into this. And that included making out with friends who later came out as uh, gay cisgender men. And... Like just being like, ah, yeah. I mean, why, why set yourself limits? Exactly. And so, yeah, that was when I realised that I was, I was into this. Yeah, nice. And wanted to continue for the foreseeable future. Lovely. No, that's that's such a funny thing, isn't it? Like, um, I remember when I was at uni, um, because I didn't really go to, I went to like a few sort of house parties bef- when I was a teenager, only in, in kind of, um, from being like sixteen to I guess eighteen, uh, when I went, well, nineteen. Um, but I remember at uni, there was like a, a few girls that were kind of, um, they kind of turn up and they're like, huh, 
I've slept with 29 people or can't wait to make it my 30th then freshest week and like genuinely this person exists um Me and it was a kind of like me. there's a, there was like a guy in my in my flat who one of them fancied and we all went out for like a, some kind of freshers party and this was actually when my friend was visiting I won't say her name though but they were female and like the girl sort of got on off with my friend just uh, but like had one eye on the on the guy do you know what I mean and it was just I was just kind of sat there like because I was in a relationship so I was just kind of sat there with all the like relationship people on the side in the in the club just kind of like this is so like oh god but my friend is bisexual so I think they probably were like this is fine but you know it's just that kind of funny and it doesn't I don't think it com- like completely goes away with becoming an adult rather than a teenager I think that some people just kind of carry that on but it's like you're I'm happy for you to use me as your um I don't know yeah was, I've always it. found it weird when people after all of that were so like emphatically straight mm. they were like no no I was absolutely doing that in That's order it. to impress the it's boy. like the next day it's like oh <laughs> but no but then like for years later and then when they realized that I wasn't mm. that was what made it weird and i was right. just like okay so you were using me to impress a boy and i'm the fucking weird one yeah cool all right i mean i, I, I <laughs> looking back on my friendships in those times i'm not 100 percent sure they were the best choices mm. for me given my like character development as i've uh, left school and and whatnot and like yeah. the people that i just surround myself with now it is it is a very different kettle of fish but these people that thought that it was really fucking funny that i was actually interested in the people that i was i was like kissing yeah it's very stuff. backwards like, what isn't it a, what a bizarre like well it just turns out um just equal opportunity exactly and then it's kind of like well why and then then you just kind of think it would be better if everyone just kind of had that so I guess attitude or thing where it's like it, if you don't label then you can do this all the time like you know open up open up your brain and then it's it should be fine yeah. <laughs> my answer to this is slightly different to yours insofar as um it was when I was watching a particular film and I know I've talked to you about this in the about this in the past um but it was <laughs> basically my sister is six years older than me. So when we were growing up, um, I would like steal a lot of her stuff, especially her DVDs. Um, we've gotten over it now, luckily, but like it was quite a point of contention for a while. But I remember one of them- Because you didn't them, live together anymore. I know. <laughs> um, and I must've been like maybe like nine or 10 years old. And I borrowed her DVD copy of the film Closer. Oh. Um, yeah I was like not old enough to watch it. I think it was a 15 so I was like perfect and they're like scuttled back into my room um and I just and it's funny because when I was making a note of this I was like right I should probably like because I barely remember the film um I should probably like read up on it so so when I talk about it I, but I think it lends itself better to the fact that the only bit I can remember is when like Clive Owen sort of takes her into the back and then she's like sat there with like her is it like a bright pink bob wig like I remember nothing from the film except this vivid scene and she and his head's in the middle of her legs and he just says like spread them or something <laughs> and then she, but she, you can tell the power dynamic is like he thinks he's like got it but she's actually controlling him and she's going to make the money at the end of it and what have you um and God yeah and she and I just remember looking at her just going oh my god because that's the bit where he asks what she tastes like and she says heaven there you go and, and then i was just, like i'm sure you do yeah, i'm sure you do Nat- natalie portman and honestly that is stuck with me like i don't remember the rest of the film um there There's was like nothing else to remember. no exactly um and i was just kind of like oh help <laughs> um but that was i would say the kind of like and it was what i said in the last episode was i didn't really understand that not that because it's not wrong, but you know, when you're brought up in like a kind of Catholic um, upbringing, it's not particularly right. But at that point in my life, I didn't really know that there was even a distinction, never mind like certain issues. But that is what I would say. Yeah, my, my equivalent to watching Closer was I went um, to Stratford on Avon with right. my mum, and we stayed in the hotel there when I must have been about. 14, 15. And I remember three things about this trip. Uh, The fact that the waiter gave us some serious side eye when we ordered two afternoon teas, (laughs) because apparently you were supposed to share one. (laughs) 
Sorry. And, mom, and my mum and I were like, we're on holiday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is our dinner. We like cake. Stop with the facial expressions. Yeah. I also remember that I had my first uh, kind of existential crisis around uh, like veganism and vegetarianism. Well, it probably wasn't my first. I remember thinking about it when I was in middle school as well. Mm. But because there was some kind of, um, I can't think what would have led up to the fact that there was a uh, squid <laughs> in our room service, but there was. And I remember looking at the one that had tentacles attached to it and thinking that looks a little bit too much like an animal for my liking. I see. And then I had a word with myself and I was just like, well, if you eat animals that don't look like animals, you know, then that's that's you being a coward if you don't eat yeah. an animal that looks like an animal. So either right this second you need to become a vegan right now <laughs> or you eat the damn squid. Yeah. And I, I, I did eat the squid. And the third thing <laughs> I remember from this trip was that we watched the film Atonement okay. with Kira Knightley and James McAvoy. <laughs> I don't. I haven't oh. seen it myself, but I I can already kind of understand. Sweet Jesus, it is one of the most heartbreaking films ever. Oh. The book is actually really good as well. But there is a scene where James McAvoy and Kira Knightley, and Kira Knightley is wearing the most kind of like liquidy emerald silk dress, and it's all done with like there's some sort of like trivia about the film where it was all shot. Like the the bits that are earlier on in history are all shot like and there's like a Chanel stocking over the lens or something, so it's all like hazy and golden. Ooh. And uh they have sex in the bookcase. Fab. And I was like I just remember being there being like, This is deeply erotic. I don't know who I want to be more. I was gonna say, knowing you personally, like you've got Kira Knightley, you've got James McAvoy, and you have a bookcase, so it's literally your personal. My dream. <laughs> my actual dream. I didn't know if I wanted to be the bookcase. Yeah. I didn't know if I wanted to be Kira Knightley being like ravished by James McAvoy, or I didn't want to be or did I want to be James McAvoy Makes ravishing note to watch this Kira, later? Kira Knightley. Like it was just the most exquisite moment. And mm. like it messes with them for like the rest of the film, but and I'm pretty sure, like, everyone dies because oh, no. of this this uh, interaction between them. And I say it was worth it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Out that, with a bang, as it were. Uh, indeed. Such a good film. <laughs> yeah, my number one film, probably. If anyone ever asks me, it's the one that I go to because it's... It makes me sound cultured. Right. But it's not... It's not really the culture. I mean, it's a beautiful film. Yeah, and it, no, it I'm really watch is, it. But... I haven't really seen Kira Knightley in any... I haven't even seen Pride and Prejudice. Um, mm. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I did listen to the soundtrack extensively when I was uh, doing exams and stuff. I think but... you'd like it. Um, what's next? Uh, first Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to start? Um, okay. So just get it out there really quickly. I was a late bloomer, so leave me alone. Um, That's fine. I think... I kissed no a boy rush. in the art cupboard. I have like, basically I have this really vivid memory and like I've spoken to friends about it who were, who knew me in year five. Um, and I remember it was one of those things where you like make two people go into a cupboard and like, you're not coming out until you kiss me. That's Children my impression so... of a five-year-old or eight-year-old. Um, and I'm pretty Sorry, sure wait, it was literally like, what's year five? I don't know, like 10? Yeah. Okay, I said okay. eight, I meant yeah, 10. Yeah, you said eight. I was, and ra- I was round like... up, rounding down, sorry. Oh, cool. Um, 10. Um, and I don't, I don't think I remember the actual thing. I just think I remember like talking about it in the kind of reconstructed memory as it were, but that was like n- basically nothing. And that was my story of my first kiss, literally up until I was, um, like proper one where it's like the whole, what's the film? Princess Diaries. Like my leg didn't even part. Aww. Um, I watched too much TV. Um, literally like 16 was my first proper kind of, I don't know kiss where I was like ah that's so this is and I I've written down wow this is I was like wow this is what makes life real um because I literally I know I remember like being washed with this like feeling of just like because it was on my drive and it was wasn't even very good because he missed um but I was like that'll do and I just remember like going back into my house being like yay 
And that um, felt really life affirming it, to you. Kind of. Um, because it was just like, well, I've done it now and now I can actually, do you know what I mean? It's so embarrassing. That's but, not um, embarrassing. <laughs> it's just kind of sad that that's what society and no. like media and stuff has done. Wow. Well, I mean, that's great. I was so that's, excited. That's really good. Um, yeah. And then my first kiss with like a girl in the kind of context of like being like romantic and being on a date and what have you wasn't until I was, how old am I now? 23. I think I was 21. And I went to a Northern town uh, city and met up with someone that I, ca- I think, I can't remember. We met online, obviously somewhere, but I can't remember which sp- specific. It might just been Instagram. Um, and we like spent the whole day together, like wandered around the shops and got some food and what have you. And it was a really, really lovely like date kind of day. And then I remember being like, right, you're going to kiss her when you get on the train. Like, just because I was so nervous because I'm so nervous about anything to do with like women because they're just so like "Ah." and I just get very inside myself I think over it um but no I I like because and she was also shorter than me so I felt like I had the kind of like you have to lead kind of impression but no so we I was like goodbye and then we were just both sort of there and I was just like and then I yeah gave her a little kiss and then she was like she went so red and then I got on the train and then and then again but it was like a hundred times more I was like on the train home and I was just like but I was I was literally 21 which sounds so strange because it feels like um obviously it wasn't my first kiss ever but it just felt very like you know I've had had such a lovely day and I hadn't like I don't think that ever goes away though when you like have your first moments with someone that you really like and mm. you've had a really good time with and stuff and those sorts of days are really magical and I really hope that those Yeah. Unfortunately I never saw her again away. after that, but that was kind of my fault. But we don't need to go into that. Yeah, I mean but life was, got in the way and she own, lived a million miles away. Yeah. In its own like in the, bubble. In the grand scheme of the UK. Yeah. <laughs> not in the grand scheme of the world. Um but no in its own little bubble that was like a really nice day and I probably will always remember it. Um I don't but I don't think she's the biggest fan of me anymore because I kind of basically I just stopped speaking to her because I didn't know how to navigate uh, myself and it was also like in kind of Christmas and New Year time which is when and we'll probably touch on this in the next episode that we do I just don't really I find it quite difficult um and because it was like so new I just kind of left it and blah blah blah. these things happen though like and it is really hard and it's it's really hard to be the other person but Mm. I think we all understand and have an element of compassion and I am like I'm I'm really grateful for that like experience even though it was quite like short-lived um I think it was good for me to have done it um but yeah your turn oh what so like first kiss and stuff um I have like three in my head (laughs) it's really weird like I have my my first time like I was kissed like kind of pecked I suppose it's sort of like your your cupboard story but like (laughs) well I had my first boyfriend when I was like nine right yeah I just I don't know he's he's grown up to be a really lovely man but like um and in fairness when I was when I was nine there were people in my class that like had boyfriends and girlfriends and what have you I just it just wasn't me yeah it's just a bizarre (laughs) well yeah I'm I'm not I'm not saying that like either one of us is is an outlier particularly Mm. it's it's just it's kind of funny to look back on it and yeah so he was really lovely he uh gave me a like a peck on the lips outside one of the French huts in our uh, middle school. It was year five. Very so what we would have, I would have been nine. He would have been 10. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, he like, you know, it was a weird, it was a weird time. He was kind of interested in another girl in our year. And so sort of between like around year five and year six, he like chopped and changed between us quite a lot. And I remember being absolute, had my little heart absolutely oh, broken. Bless you. And I remember sobbing in the car because he had kind of got his timings mixed up and he'd asked her out before he'd broken up with me. Oh no. And like, you know, bless. Yeah. He had like, get, and that kind of thing gets around quick in a primary school. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was, yeah, it was, a, it was a middle school. There were quite there were a few mm. hundred people, but it was, um, yeah, that was, that was really difficult. And it was sort of one of those things where like one of their friends came and did the telling, mm. like typical kind of like small, I mean, he had a lot going on. Um, I remember like our first, maybe only like date, I met his family and I was just like, well, this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> this, oh, okay, understood. Um, and so, yeah, like, no hard feelings mm. like 15 years later <laughs> but um Christ I was 15 years yeah. that's more than 15 years that's Ooh. gosh um and then when I lived in Ireland 
um, I got kind of coupled up with a boy um, in my year who was uh, technically a year older than me, so I don't really know how that worked, but it was kind of like we were both a bit, like, different. Mm. Um, And so we just like, oh, wouldn't it be super cute if you guys got together? Get together. Mm. And it was, I was just, like, really wanting to be accepted. And he was a really nice guy. Like, we had nothing in common he was like super sporty and from what i'm aware of like he still is like big into his like mm. irish sports like was it gaelic athletics type hurling and, wow. and gaelic football and stuff and, like he was super into it and so yeah we had a ton in common obviously and I, I vividly remember that we it was set up for us to meet and that was the word that was the really loaded word yeah the way that kind of like now like i just suppose it would be like kind of hooking up or or like getting together or like whatever but the word meet had so much weight to it Mm. and because i'd moved in there and hadn't grown up with this this other language that every school has every community has that you have these like these subtle words i was Mm. like so i'm just gonna like go meet him Mm. and they're like yeah you're gonna go meet him like behind the trees and i was like Oh, okay. this, is, this is making me like itch. Yeah, I do not miss school at all. And, and like, and sort of like these these girls that like were they were kind of older than me, and they like they were kind of like hurried around me, and they were like, "Can do you want some like lip balm? Do you want some chewing gum?" And I was just like, "I mean, he's in my science class. I think I'll be fine." <laughs> and then like it, it suddenly became very clear mm. what was going on, and I was just like, "Well, if this is how I get friends and how they stop bullying me, then." <laughs> this little sure I'll go for it and like he was a really nice guy Mm. bless him he had the most (laughs) poor the braces oh the braces I can still feel them in my mouth now (laughs) because this was what we would have been like oh 11 or 12 Mm. probably like 11 he was maybe like yeah 12 13 god bless we were so small (laughs) but like my face was mashed yeah (laughs) And I did not know what to do. I remember it so oh. vividly, like the whole like sensory experience of like the trees and the fact that we were slightly out of bounds. And like, I was just convinced that like a teacher was going to come and I was going to be like, rumbled. What do you expect me to do? I want to stop being bullied. Yeah. Like, I thought this was my way into like the popular kids. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that was, that was it. We went on a few dates. It was yeah i i lied about it to my parents um or my dad my stepmom mm. which caused a whole world of hurt when they found out like that was a whole <laughs> yeah. that's a whole other thing but um yeah we went on some dates it was nice he he he's lovely i think he watches my instagram stories every now and again Aww. and like we we spoke on like msn or something years wow. later after I'd moved back to the UK and I was like, yeah, we have nothing in common. We really don't need to keep this going. You're a very sweet boy, but like, nah. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then later on, I suppose it would be with, yeah, like people that I then like went on to have more like adult relationships with, mm. though, like kisses and stuff. But I just, I remember those really like young kisses and, and like kind of the, the feelings and stuff. And I just, I really hate the way that people, that they, they shit on really young people kind of like dipping their toes into mm. those sorts of things and it feels so important at the time and people they're just like oh you know these things come around again and it's like they do and you will feel the exact same way every time yeah. every time there's a new person that you're really interested in or that you know you feel that spark with and you do that kind of like spending the whole day together mm. or kind of like doing on going on a date and you're like are we friends are we not and then kind of like the sort of like you know like you'll go and you're kind of like your knees will go together or like kind of you know you'll like touch hands and it's Mm. like I don't know I'm 25 and it's not really in my head though like I feel like and I've I've been on like a few dates in my lifetime and I feel like it's only me that's doing that it's just like I like I have the exact same like not brain but like thoughts as you around that but I always am just like you need to just calm down like I just take myself to the side and I'm like I I think I think a lot of people get it and sort of if you get it once then that's probably just how you are and I think it's a really lovely thing to be able to get those feelings because I wouldn't consider myself a particularly like romantic person Mm. I'm frustratingly pragmatic at times but I think that you do sometimes get those like little butterflies or those really nice moments and I think that they're absolutely to be cherished Mm. and I think looking back on like my earlier experiences with 
with people we we don't talk honestly enough with young people about the difference between normal butterflies and like kind of happy good but still kind of like anxiety sort of makes you feel a bit sick kind of feelings and gut feeling of no this is wrong and I think that if we were more frank with kids about like how really exciting these things can be and yeah exciting to the point of where you feel like you're about to throw up because oh my god it's it's just so much and it's new and you don't really know what to do with yourself Mm. or the kind of pit of your stomach type no I'm not fully on board with this but people could convince you and push you one way or the other through like friends of being like no you guys should be together or kind of like no he's really cool he's really great or you know she's really cool she's really great or whatever and then you can end up in situations that you can look back on with not necessarily regret but I look back on them and I just kind of wish that someone had taken me to one side and explained the difference in the feelings and it's also like um with young people and we're talking kind of nine to sort of 12 13 year olds there's not enough like you know it's considered um i don't know searching for the right word but other what another word for like perverted of the child if they have kind of like curiosities about sex and all this kind of stuff but you know it's in it's linked to when you start puberty as well and like i've got friends who start puberty when they were like nine years old i i think i um, my first period, I think, was when I was it was on my thirteenth birthday, so I was like kind of late in that sense. But um, d- do you know what I mean? Like, there's oh, a lot absolutely. of like, oh no, we shouldn't talk to like little Timmy about all that kind of stuff. But it's yeah, like, I mean, like I didn't have frank conversations with stuff like that until I was probably like seventeen, eighteen, mm. with with anyone about like kind of how you feel within yourself about stuff, and also also like to do with being raised as a girl and there's never any emphasis put on actually how you might feel in regards to like sexuality and things there's Mm. things like you get the kind of cute girly romantic stuff of kind of like oh girls they just fall in love and they're all like unicorns and rainbows and stuff and it's like yeah but also like the sexual stuff is there as well and that comes from puberty for most people obviously not for everyone and at different times for different people and all of that kind of stuff but like we don't we're just not honest enough with kids and so you can end up in really really tricky situations I think where you can end up trying to like make other people happy because you don't really know how to make yourself happy and so it's it's easier to just follow those kind of pre-trodden paths that you've seen in films and tv and and sort of that you you see in the narratives around you in like parents and other adults Mm. and stuff and yeah definitely there's a whole load of like shame um i don't know how we're doing for time because i could maybe we'll like put that in a different episode because yeah i think it's good to expand on that so in that case the next one on here is um first derogatory comment oh do you want to go first or shall i Uh, yeah i'll 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 go first like it's a it's it's a it's an odd it's an odd one because technically it's not a derogatory comment so Um, my i don't think mine are either but it's (laughs) but it's it's all about the uh the intent Mm. in these ones and the 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 tone and stuff and I just I remember being called a lesbian at the age of well I was in year two so I would have been like six or seven by another year two but like... yeah hilarious I was sat on another girl's lap and he called us dirty lesbians <laughs> dirty <laughs> lesbians which oh my god is just like I've, I've seen how both of these the people in this situation grew up and it's god it's funny <laughs> um like she, she is not and she is one of the most kind of like just normal seeming people um i mean i don't know her well i'm sure you know she has many intricacies and stuff but from the outset she she just looks super normal mm. and and so does he and it just she was way more offended than i was because i didn't know what it meant right. and as because she had an older sibling and he had older siblings and stuff so they must have just heard these words around and so i went home and asked my mum, and so I was just like, I will wait until I am informed in order to give my reaction. Yes. And uh, I asked my mum, and my mum was just like, oh, it's just like a, a woman that loves another woman. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool, yeah. 
sorted. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, absolutely. Grand. Like, with. I'm all right with that. And then if it had ever come up again, then I would have just been like, yep. Yeah. Because I was seven and I didn't understand like the sexual components of that. Yeah. But I was just like, sure, I love my friend. She's she's really nice. I mean, she wasn't, but really liked her at the time. Yeah. And stuff. And I, I just, I remember thinking how weird it was that someone would say that with so much like venom. Mm. And like with the with the prefix of dirty, dirty lesbians. Like, yeah. well, thank you. I do love my friends. <laughs> and I had a bath last yeah. night. So you. you the you, logic you, is not there. Yeah. That's that's so funny. Because you know that he's just heard that from an His older person. Or yeah. Yeah. Oh, dirty lesbians. <laughs> well, similarly, because my my one is also um like another like young boy that just has too much to say. Um and I remember specifically because I think I was in year 10, but like as again with the whole like late bloomer thing and because I went because I know you also went to Catholic school, but like I went you went for longer than I, I went, did. Yeah, I went till I was older. So I felt like um, my kind of like later adolescence started, you know, a bit later, whatever. Um, so when I was in year 10, I think like mentally, I was probably in year like eight. Um, but I was just like at the park with my with my pals, not just like sitting around smoking. We were actually playing with the, we were like on the zip wire and it was great. It was a, such a fun day. Um, and I was wearing like a Gap hoodie and... Um, and literally, and then this kid was probably like year six, and because I was bigger, um, I can't I can't remember my reaction. I think I probably thought that I said something really cool back, but he was like, um, "You know, your hoodie stands for gay and proud," um, and I remember being like, I wasn't like confident enough at the time to be like, "Well, fuck you, little boy." Um, well, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I think I might have said something like "shut up" or like "go home." It's your bedtime. <laughs> Or something like that. But I remember just being like, I, but I remember not feeling like deeply offended or because like, similarly to you, I was just kind of like, well, okay. Is that supposed to be an insult? I'm not sure. But, um, and I can't look at anything made by, made by Gap without thinking about that. Well, you can get again. those jumpers now, can't you? Yes. Where they've changed where... the pee for a while. Yeah. But they, they are like super expensive, but I think I will get one at some point. Yeah, one day. One day we'll go half on the, the, like the shipping. Well. We can it's go half on the shipping. We'll sort of stay. Um, but I think I'm lucky insofar as like I, do, I don't think I've ever been like it, maybe like once or twice, but I can't re- remember. You know how people say like, oh, I get catcalled all the time, or like I get like harassed in bars. I do you not? I I genuinely don't think that I often would do. You, would you just not notice? Maybe I don't notice, but I think I just and I don't mean this, and I don't mean to say this in a way that's like, oh, I wish it was me. But I think I'm always with the people that get it, but I don't. As in, they people get like. Um, approached in bars and like or like pubs I don't know why I'm calling them bars we live in a tiny town um, and like hit on and when they just want them to go away like I'm always the one just sat there like this is not, not this is really awkward just like fuck like go away man um, I, d- I genuinely don't think it it's rarely targeted really targeted to me I don't know if that's because I'm quite tall and I could like punch them I don't know I hope that's just, what you're, they think you're intimidating that's, what, that's my like internal like oh it's because I'm too hard you that's don't, fine you, you, you don't look like easy pickings <laughs> yeah um but but yeah so like in ter- I think I'm quite lucky insofar as I don't get the kind of like constant um harassment but that you know that could change because I do like I said I live in a small town I've never lived in a city for very long well it's you're going to cross more people's paths yeah. in a city, whereas the people around here know you. Mm. But yeah, honestly, I I don't, I can't remember like the last time where I felt personally uncomfortable at the like hands of a, someone else. But I've been like witnessed it a lot of times, and it's always just the worst. Yeah, thing. no, that's that's interesting that you've you've made that distinction. Um, yeah, because like I. I've been in your shoes in that and then I've I've also had it myself. Um and it's that kind of urge to just like be compliant mm. and to kind of just, you know, smile and it'll stop, but don't smile too much because you don't want to encourage yeah. it. Um but also I've had the weird aggression that comes with being like overtly gay. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. which I don't think I am, especially. I don't think, you know, it's that weird like femme presenting problem where like oh no you're too pretty to be a lesbian or something and it's just like well you know yeah there, there are pretty lesbians um also not a lesbian but it's um but like I've, I've had people 
weirdly enough, like at Pride, like you know this about um, a couple of years ago. And I had I was wearing a gender is over uh, jersey, mm-hmm. and a guy like fully started squaring up to me, like much to the embarrassment of his friends. Like his friends were like, "Mate, what are you doing?" But he was fully about to like smack me. And I just can't. It's like I read your T-shirt that offends me. Like I know because I know you. It's not like you're like, and it, it doesn't matter if you were sort of like parading around screaming. But um, yeah, so you're not- I'm not very confrontational. Yeah, that's that's the point. And the person like obviously like read your shirt, thought that offends me, even though my friends think I'm being a loutish. Well, his his whole <laughs> point, um, not that he put it particularly articulately, um, because we were in a weather spoons, I did just need to pee. Um, and his point was, if gender is over, then I can assault you like a man. <sighs> if you're not a woman, like then I can- because obviously I wouldn't punch a woman because I'm a stand-up guy. Yeah, but but since gender's but over, since gender's over, rolling up the sleeves, yeah, mate. I can oh smack God. you like a bloke. And his mates were like, um, "Come on, we don't we don't speak for him." Yeah, come on, Gavin. You've had one too many. <laughs> like, Fuck's sake, Gavin. Yeah, just his name wasn't Gavin. No, no offense oh. to any Gavins listening, but like it was. I remember that happening because you were by yourself as well, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. It's just I don't just remember. But the thing is that like sometimes these things are terrifying and like yeah. I have been in situations where these things are really really scary that one was terrifying for about 10 seconds and then was immediately hilarious <laughs> because like for 10 seconds I really thought I was going to get punched yeah. and I was like I haven't had this for a while uh fun um I've only had this in like romantic relationships <laughs> but like I've not had this from a stranger for like yeah. a good long while and then I was thinking oh I used to do kickboxing will any of it come back um, you're in the middle of, I'm not that it makes any difference to, because it kind of, you kind of like zone in on, on the situation, but you're in like a busy pub. <laughs> yeah, um, this isn't going to end well for him. Yeah, it will, it will be a bloodbath in your favour, I think. Yeah, like, and it's, it's one of those things where you're so completely aware of your privilege, because like, to all intents and purposes, I'm just like a cute little white girl in the middle of a busy Weatherspoons in the middle of the day, like, just there with like my little my little t-shirt on, this red-faced ham of a man kind of coming up to me. And I was like, mm, well, this... Your friends are going to take the piss out of you about this for yeah. months, about that time that you nearly tried to, like, punch a pixie. Yeah, like, it's literally. Not, it's not going to go well. Yeah, we're going to finish it with the fun question of the week. Oh, yeah. Um, I... <laughs> Imogen Googled who icebreakers. Went, yeah, who went first last time? Oh, it doesn't really matter. I did, because um, it was your question. Would you prefer to go... Well, this is your question, so I have to yeah. ask it. Did anyone actually say what the question of the week was out loud? <laughs> um, by the way, the question of the week this week is, if you were to have a dream dinner party, who would your guests be? Fucking chop that in. That's <laughs> Um, because we're like a bit strapped for time, I'm not going to go into like ex- explicit detail, but I will read you my list. So I've got Anne Hathaway, obviously, the entire cast of Hairspray the film, um, only for like a uh, post main course pre dessert musical number in the Oh, so they're go. working. Then they they're can not go. guests, um, they're working. <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer can stay, the rest can go. Um, Meryl Streep, Tom Hardy as Bane, but only if he behaves himself. And um, Erwin from Lord of the Rings, because she's badass. Nice. I think that's... And maybe Gandalf. Or, or just Ian McKellen in general. But so I feel like... a whole like... bunch of fictional characters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're all fictional. Okay. Or most of them. Anne Hathaway is not fictional. No, Anne Hathaway is just and Anne Meryl Hathaway. Um, I would actually, if I could pick, I would have like a little thing that makes her go between characters that she's played. If this is a hypothetical like mm, world yeah. where I can do that. Um, because I love her. And that's it. That's cool. mine. That sounds... I honestly thought of this like five minutes before we sat down. I love that. Um, no, I'm, I'm into that. I'd quite like to be a fly on the wall for that for that conversation. So what about you? Oh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't prepare an answer. It was my question. Uh, well, I usually go uh, Stephen Fry nice. and uh, Hugh Laurie, preferably at the same time. Um, either, end, either side of you? Uh, mm, Probably, yeah, sitting like opposite each other and I'm like on the other side of the table. And then there's like, and then we've got room for, hmm, I quite like Darren Brown. Okay. I, I I know that, I think there's an element of somehow, some way that he's a bit problematic, but I can't remember what it you is. You can put him so. at the far end. 
of the I, table. Yeah, because he he got someone to shoot Stephen Fry in a in a in a program once, so I imagine they know each other. Ah, oh. um, Sandy Toxvig. Nice. Um, okay, so I've got four. How many is a reasonable amount of people for a dinner party? Well, I've got like six. It depends how big your table is, really. But yeah. you know, but you, you personally probably, I imagine you wouldn't want you'd want it to be quite um. You know. Well, my thing is that they all know each other as well, so I just kind of want to you sit, could just there, sit and there and watch like, them. Beaming. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So maybe and then do. like maybe like Emma Thompson as well. Nice. So because I love I love her. I realise they are all white people of a certain age. They're like affluent middle class white people, but I just want to watch. Probably them. all affiliated with the BBC in some way, but like yeah, that's basically. fine. Yeah, I'll just sit there and watch them. The conversations would be amazing. I yeah. Feel. So yeah, no, great. But yeah, Hamilton. so that's so that's a summation of of some of our yeah. our firsts. We've we've you know we've created some nice little jumping off points for ourselves for sure for, for future for episodes, sure. uh, things that we can dive into deeper. But but that's that's it for us for now. You've been listening to us two queers one pod. So yeah, follow us on Instagram at two queers one pod for more info. Um, and we're also newly on Patreon for all sorts of bonus content. Be sure to rate, review and subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Acast or wherever. You do your listening. You do your listening. It's actually become a regular thing because yes. I would like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next okay. week. All right. Bye. Bye. This podcast was produced by Harry Williams.